Hello and welcome to A Cup of Coffee with me, Sandy. Each week I have a guest who joins me for a cup of coffee and we discuss their lives, loves and who knows what else. So let's see who we've got this week. I don't sit with a cup of coffee, but today I am because most of us really drink a lot of coffee in our lifetime. But the guest that I've got today joining me for a cup of coffee, I think he outdoes us all. Well, certainly Americans do. And Americans link coffee with bagels. And we have got today the Bagel King, Harvey, the Bagel King of New York. Welcome to a cup of coffee with me. How are you? Thank you, Sandy. Nice being with you today. Yes, my goodness me, but where's your coffee? And where's the bagel? It's dinner time in New York. It's sort of a breakfast thing. Oh, okay. Well, I want to tell you that for me, I can have a bagel and a coffee at any time. As well, well, for me, I, I can also, but it sort of breaks the tradition. Oh, okay. Well, we're not going to break any tradition. And that's what I'm going to ask you about. The tradition of the bagel. How did the bagel start? Well, the bagel started in Eastern Europe in places where Jews used to live and it was a Jewish delicacy. One of the historical tales, be it accurate or not, is that there was a Polish prince who was being very kind to the Jews and they baked this thing that they called a bagel, which my Polish isn't very good, but is sort of Polish for stirrup, like you use in a horse on, when you ride. Yeah. And this prince liked to go horseback riding. Wow. So that is one of the stories as to where bagels started. Okay. Why so did the I bagel get, got a hole in the middle? Well, so if it's like a stirrup, it's so he can put his foot through it when he rides his horse. Well, I'll be. So if that be true, and I like that story, so let's make it true. Uh, the Jews in Poland and the prince in Poland were the beginning of bagels. And as the Jews migrated to the United States, they brought all kinds of things with them. And obviously one of them was the bagels. So in the uh, beginning of the 20th century, the end of the 19th century, the big immigration of Eastern European Jews into places like New York resulted in New York becoming the bagel capital of North America. And you are the bagel. How they got here. <laughs> And always been known as Harvey the Bagel King. Now, uh, is it correct? In my mind, at least. <laughs> but I know you for a very long time, and I've only known you as the Bagel King of New York. And I know that even when you travel, you have traveled with uh, uh, bagels, not cooked. I don't know how you make them. I have not asked you, but I know that you've actually brought bagels to my home for breakfast. Yes. And then I have provided the smoked salmon and the Philly cheese. And that is the way that I've grown up eating bagels, as I'm sure most of America does. Yes, bagels and lox. Well, lox is it the same as smoked salmon. It's uh, in America. It is. Just a little bit different taste. Yes? Yes. Okay. okay. And now also um, bagels in America, I've had it with uh, salt beef. And that's more of a lunch. Yes. Yes. And they also make bagels in many, many different flavors and combinations and as everything gets adjusted, bagels got adjusted. So they make chocolate chip bagels and they make strawberry bagels. And on St. Patrick's Day, they make green bagels. And way. Yeah, so, so red bagels on Valentine's Day or pink bagels on Valentine's Day. So bagels have become pretty much a staple. Uh, the uh, 
big chain restaurants like Burger King sells bagels now. So uh, it is not a, an ethnic specialty food anymore. It is pretty much a standard bread item on most menus in most places. All over the world. Last night I was with some friends and the daughter is a young lady of 20. And I said to her, and she is Spanish, and I said to her that uh, I was going to be talking to you this evening, uh, our evening and your afternoon. And I said, he is the bagel king. And I said, do you know what bagels are? And she looked at me and she said, yes. And I said, how do you know bagels? She said, because my mother buys bagels and we have bagels in the house. And I was actually surprised because I didn't realize that even the Spanish, the real Spanish families knew about bagels the way we do. Yes. Uh, and you became the bagel king and it was sold in not only a bagel shop. Your shop sold coffee as well. Correct. Yes, it was sort of, a, it was a cafe and we did bagels right. and we had, because we are in America, we have to do it our way, uh, 25 different varieties of bagels that we served as well as selling them in bulk in a bag. The, the typical order on a Sunday morning for a family is a dozen bagels and the, the father usually gets told to get up early in the morning and go to the bagel store and goes and gets a dozen bagels and those go home and that becomes Sunday morning breakfast. And what but we also, we also had a restaurant or a cafe and sold bagels that we put all kinds of things on, mostly what you call Philadelphia, what we call cream cheese and smoked salmon that we call lox. And I also made my own creation, which we called an egg McHarvey. What's that? that was, don't tell McDonald's that I stole their name, but uh, it was a bagel with an egg, a piece of ham and a piece of cheese. And that was an egg McHarvey, famous for at least 10 miles from my bagel store. Well, All you never it. told me that. Now I know that your son has also got a, a bagel shop, but his is just pure bagels. Is that correct? No, actually he started with bagels, but he is now a full service bakery. Uh, he is a graduate of the Culinary Institute of America, classically trained as a chef and a baker in the French tradition. So he has a wonderful uh, full service bakery with all kinds of delicious sweet things, as well as breads and bagels. Right. And he also, he also supplies uh, most of the wedding cakes that we have on Long Island. He is a prime supplier of wedding cakes. It's very interesting to go to his shop on a you know, Friday night or a Saturday morning and see 50 or 60 wedding cakes all lined up ready to go. Uh, but you didn't have the qualifications. You just fell into it. Yes, I did. He has got the qualifications and yes. I should imagine the certificates as well that goes to say that he is yes. a master baker. Yes, he, he is classically trained and has had years and years of experience. But he did start making bagels with me. That's how, how he started. After, after he graduated from school, he decided he did not like the corporate way of of working for a big company and uh, following all of their procedures, he wanted to kind of be independent. So I was his first step towards independence. And then one day he called me on the phone and told me he wanted to come over and talk to me. And what I have learned is that when your children call you and tell you they want to talk to you, it's never about anything good. And he was telling me that the bakery in the shopping center where our bagel store was, was for sale and he wanted to buy it. I thought that was a great idea where he could combine bagels and the regular bakery. And then he informed me, no, that uh, that's not what he planned. He uh, wanted to just do the bakery. And that meant I had to go back to work full time. 
So I tried to be supportive as hard as I could, knowing that I was, my semi-retirement was almost over. And I told him, go for it. And he did and has become very successful. That's so. amazing. But then you, you changed your life. You went from bakery to traveling. I and did. the way that you and your lovely wife, Carol, have traveled worldwide is something that really I should have done years ago. Wish I had. I never did. Now it's probably too late. But you did something a long time ago, and I think when you did, it was in its infancy, and that's home exchange. Yes. I, I think it may have been popular in Europe before it came here to America. I was listening to the radio one day, and somebody was discussing this. I, they had either written a book or an article somewhere talking about home exchanging, and I came home and said to my wife, I just heard something very interesting on the radio. What do you think? And I explained to her and she said, that sounds like a wonderful idea. And we jumped right on it. It was very interesting because this was 25 years ago. And the process was... Uh, one of getting a printed catalog with thousands of listings of people who wanted to exchange their homes and then writing a letter. If anybody remembers what writing a letter is and oh, time putting, a, putting a stamp on it and mailing it. And then a few weeks later, getting a letter back for us, of course, with a funny stamp from a strange place. Somebody saying, yes, we would love to come to New York. How would you like to come to Paris? And the process all happened over the period of weeks through the mail. And that's how we did it for probably the first 10 years. Now, of course, today when we do that, if we see something we like in the evening while we are on the computer, we just send an email and have an answer the next morning. Very and Yes, and, and can talk, can Skype with the people and just talk with them and walk through the house with them. And it, it's a very different process, but the end result is pretty much the same. So where was your first exchange to, Paris? First exchange was outside of Paris, near Chantilly. And uh, it was a family of five parents and three children, teenage children, who it was their first exchange and we went there and they came here and we all had a wonderful, wonderful time in each other's places. Uh, we met some of their relatives. They met some of our relatives. We are still friendly with these people. Uh, we have been to their children's weddings. You've grown up together. They, yes. And they have come back. I mean, now those teenage children are parents of, teenage children, and they have come back to New York. So uh, we have established a, uh, a, a group of exchange friends, and now their children have become our friends. Uh, if a, a student is, uh, wants to spend some time in New York, the parents will send an email and say, uh, you know, Simon is interested in coming to New York for a couple of weeks. And we always have room here and they stay here and it has been fabulous. That, that's amazing. And are there countries that you've been to that you thought that you would never go to? Um, no, we, we, have met, we have done this only in Europe, a couple in Canada, a couple in the United States. We are travelers, but not adventurous travelers. Uh, we like to eat, so we like to go places where we don't have to worry about what we are eating. So not, not quite as much uh, uh, emphasis on how uh, strange something could be or how different. Uh, our life is okay, and we have no problem living an equivalent life just in a different location. Yeah, it's amazing because you unpack, it's then your home. And you can explore around. And of course, the home exchange doesn't include your car as well. It does. 
So you're not, so the, paying, for a, you're not paying for a hotel, you're not yes. paying for a car hire, all yes. you're paying for is your flight. Yes, once you've gotten there, it costs the same to be there as it does to be home. If you want to go out for dinner, you can go out for dinner. If you want to go to the market and cook dinner, and we love to cook, my wife is an excellent cook, so going to a, a market in a, a country that is different from yours and seeing all of the different choices of fruits and vegetables and meats and spices and things, it, it becomes just a, a bigger and bigger adventure as, as you do things, just changing geography. Sure. It, it actually is then an adventure. Going to a market in any country and you see the different foods and the different spices and you, you don't know what they are. And then you try and, if you don't speak the language, you try and work out what it is and what you can do with it. And it changes your palate. Yes. Yes. Um, it opens you up to, to things that you had no idea existed and yes you can stand in the market with trying whatever language of the country you're in or usually the people want to speak english and most of the time wherever we are their english is better than my french or german or spanish spanish oh okay a little bit but i mean we speak what we call menu spanish or menu french so we, we have not gone hungry any place because we could always figure out the menu in a, in a restaurant. So, uh, but in any case, you know, with hands and eyes and mouth. Ab and absolutely. You work yes. out, exactly. Have you found any homes that were not that as you really believed they were in the times when it was letter writing, not when you could zoom around or... No, not, not really. I mean, uh, there have been houses that are not as glamorous or not as uh, modern as, as we might have thought they would be, but never had a terrible experience. I mean, uh, the people who do this are not like people who rent a place to strangers these people have an interest because they are in your house and you are in their house. Yeah. And that is the answer to the question about having strangers in your house. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the usual question that, that people say to us is, well, what do you do with all of your stuff? That was my when next question. And, and, and we have a very good friend who has also done exchanges like we do. And she says, when they ask you, what do you do with your stuff? You tell them you shouldn't be exchanging that you're not the right kind of person to exchange because you don't worry about your stuff. So you don't actually lock anything up that you don't want them to touch because your home is as you would be yes. in your home. Yes. My, my wife would love to have a lot of jewelry that she has to lock up someplace so that nobody steals it. But, you know, I haven't bought it for her yet, so she doesn't have to lock it up when we go away. But, uh, yes, it, it is a, a wonderful experience, and we have kept relationships. We have done 50 exchanges in the past 25 years, and we have relationships with probably half the people at our good friends with yeah. 10 or 12 of the families. As your son followed you as a bagel maker, has he followed you in home exchange as well? He certainly has. And he has a beautiful home on the, on the water here in the suburbs. But in addition, they have a flat in Manhattan. And with a no, flat in Manhattan, me. You can, ex you can exchange anywhere in the world because everyone wants to come. Not everyone wants to come to the suburbs because if you're coming to New York, they want to come to New York and, and see the city. But we're an hour, we are an hour away from the city. So that, that's okay because most people don't really want to be in the city the whole time that they're here. 
it's a little overpowering and uh, and too much. So they come out here and we have the ocean and we have parks and trees and things. And that's nice. But he having the apartment in the city allows him to do exchanges anywhere he wants. So he has a twofold. He can exchange his home and yes. he can exchange uh, the apartment in Manhattan. So which is absolutely amazing. And I know that you and Carol also are avid theater goers. Yes. And uh, so when you go to the theater, do you then stay in his apartment in Manhattan or do you drive back? That is, oh, yeah, that is always an option, yes. Carol and I have figured out how to have the right kind of children. So we have a kid with a swimming pool that we can go to anytime. We don't have, I don't have to keep taking care of a swimming pool. Uh, we have uh, a kid, two kids actually who have apartments in the city. So we can do that. So we are, uh, yes, the answer, the, that's the long answer to your question. Yes. You've, you've trained your kids extremely well. And prepare them for us to impose on them uh, as much as we possibly can and why not you well, gave them a lot when they were kids and now uh, it's payback time it, it's very interesting because my mother always told us that she never wanted to be a burden to her children uh my philosophy is i want to be a burden to my children i'm working on it so <laughs> I'm going back to your mother now because I know that you have got a mother who is a rather elderly lady and still rather. is amazing. Going to be, going to be 102 years old. <gasps> oh, yes. my goodness me. Did, would she have gotten um, a telegram from a queen? Do America uh, well, get? Uh, no, there, there used to be a, a weatherman on television who used to announce hundred birth hundredth birthdays but he died before she got to be a hundred so she missed out on that actually Carol and I made her a uh, a, a faux greeting from him oh amazing just amazing what a life what birthday. a life you and Carol have had I know that you come down to southern Spain pretty often and uh, I don't know if you will be coming down uh, sometime this year because of the situation that we're in but I certainly hope that you will and if you do all I ask of you is one favor can you make me bagels for breakfast again I will not eat yes. for a week it will be my <laughs> Philadelphia cheese and smoked salmon it won't be cream cheese and lux Okay, uh, we, we can make, we can have a bagel workshop and we can make the bagels ourselves and then eat them. Well, I want to tell you, I think it's nearly time for you to come back, enjoy the sunshine here, depending on what the situation is as far as the new world, the new life, the new beginnings, the new everything. Uh, we keep our fingers crossed that I will be seeing you and Carol and a lot of your friends down in southern Spain will be enjoying the two of you and also the dinner parties that we have enjoyed together, which always start <laughs> with bagels. So you will always yes. to me, be the bagel king, uh, not only of New York, now of southern Spain as well. Harvey, lovely speaking with you. Take care. Lots of love to you both and stay safe. And see you soon. Thank you. Same to you, Sandy. Okay. Have a lovely Bye-bye now. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, that's the end of today's program. And I hope that you enjoyed my guest. Also a cup of coffee. Have a lovely week. And I look forward to seeing you and sharing another guest and another cup of coffee with you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.